All right, everybody, welcome to episode number 11 of Do The Move Podcast. Get those ones up there, boys. Uh, my name's Chad. we got Rich, George, and Bob here today. Smaller cast than uh, what we normally have. I uh, apologize about being out last week. I think we had uh, a little bit of wrestling hangover from our uh, last few weeks here. It's been been quite busy for us, so uh, bringing it back full speed tonight. Uh, with the four of us, a uh, couple things, obviously, going over uh, our normal shows throughout the week. Um, kind of glance over some of the rumors and signings and releases going on in the world of wrestling, mostly AEW-related, because that's all we seem to watch this week. Um, and then uh, move on to Chef's Kiss and Bona Pick. So, boys, uh, got anything we want to start off the show with real quick? Any thoughts? Yes, we can go to WWE and get that out the way. <laughs> All right. Oh, something just broke here on my screen. What the hell is going on? Everything was up, and then it decided to close out of the Zoom meeting. There we go. Sorry about that. Y'all technical difficulties like there is every week here. Uh, starting off with Raw, we had Bobby Lashley defeating Seth Rollins for the United States Championship. Kevin Owens defeated Johnny Gargano. The Brawling Brutes defeated the Street Profits. Judgment Day defeated Matt Riddle and Rey Mysterio. And Bailey defeated Alexa Bliss. Uh, I don't think any of us caught Raw this week, so I'm not sure if we've got a whole lot to say there. Um, I think they had some subliminal messaging going on Raw for SmackDown, correct? Did, did anyone catch that part? I believe so. I mean, the only thing that I can talk about is Dominic Mysterio um, with Judgment Day. Mama. It's yeah, mommy and papi. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's definitely it's definitely working from from what I've seen. Um, I don't know how else everybody else is receptive to it, but I think it, it it took too long for him to turn. But I finally like you can see the actual fruition of his turn with Judgment Day. I actually enjoy it, um, just from what I've saw from clips and whatnot. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice to see him do his own thing and not be under Daddy's shadow for sure. Um, it was nice seeing them together. Just he's still one of those guys where he's still so so new, from what we've seen on TV. Um, I think having him around more people rather than just Ray, especially people his size, is going to help him a lot. You know, you, you're talking about uh, how big is he? Like six feet tall compared to Ray? Like you know. Him trying to do all the shit that Ray does is just a little, little out there. But you know he's definitely not the biggest speaker at all either. So having three other guys or guys and gals, I should say, who can kind of speak for him and push him along, uh, is going to be good for him. And I did see part of him in the ring. I know, oh, was it was it Raw or was it SmackDown? I forget which one, which one it was this week, but he was trying to talk and literally the crowd was just shitting on him. Like they weren't letting him talk at all. Um, so it's, uh, it's a good move in that sense that he's getting a reaction from the crowd. So we'll just see how this progresses and you know, what, uh, what he introduces to his character next. Uh, ba -ba -boom. Moving on to NXT. Uh, George, you can definitely tweet about it if you want to. I think I forgot about doing that, too. Uh, NXT 2.0, uh, I believe, started with Shawn Michaels uh, relinquishing Solo Sequoia's title uh, from him because it was advised that the title match last week was not sanctioned. So we are going to have a North American title ladder match at Halloween Havoc. Uh, first up on the show, Axiom versus Nathan Frazier. Nathan Frazier took home the victory in that match. Uh, we had Toxic Attraction defeat Ivy Nile and Tatum Paxley. The Schism defeated Edris Anafe and Malik Blade. Probably pronounced those names wrong. I apologize. Didn't get to catch that one. And Cora J defeated Wendy Chu. And Chase U defeated Hayes and Williams. Bon Wagner defeated Sanga. And moving on to the Oral Mensa defeated Grayson Waller. JD McDonough defeated Tyler Bate. And that was it, it looks like. 
Uh, any thoughts on NXT? Did anybody get to catch that? I know I kind of had that on in the background as well. Where, where's not. Joey? Where's Joey? Joey, where NXT, are you at? Man? NXT, where are you at, Joey? Joey, Joey where are you at? Joey is with his significant other right now, so he is uh, unfortunately too busy for us. Joey, congrats a... congrats on your couples. Have fun. Uh, Joey's got a birthday this week, uh, so Ooh. happy early birthday to the J-Dog himself. Uh, I got to actually catch his uh, uh, freshman football games this weekend, so it was cool to see him. Watch last week, too. Uh, anywho, move on to SmackDown before we kiss Joey's ass any further. Um, so we had some more subliminal messaging going on here. Now, and I'm going to kind of get into this before we go over the card, because a lot of thoughts are Bray Wyatt is going to be coming back. That's the big rumor right now um, with this whole bunny thing that uh, you know is being shown if you do the little QR code and whatnot. Um kind of it's interesting it's something different i don't think any promotion's done anything like this before in that sort of sense with the messaging but um they've been playing white rabbit by jefferson airplane and live arenas um white rabbit on monday night raw as well uh there was a, a cryptic hangman puzzle as well haha <laughs> hangman um so but we'll uh, we'll dive into the card before you can go further into that uh Liv morgan defeated lacey evans the new day defeated maximum male models braun Strowman defeated otis raquel rodriguez defeated dakota kai and the usos retained against the brawling brutes uh thoughts gentlemen shout out to Sami Zayn, 100 percent. you start out the, the the night with the bloodline they come out like Sami Zayn just makes it's it's funny, but he makes it not corny. Um, like honestly, and then when he's like, before all the bloodlines like about to leave, Sami Zayn takes the mic. It's like, excuse me, I I just want to make sure that you know I I say my two cents, and and then Roman's like, what are you doing here, man? Who are you? <laughs> Take off that shirt that says Who bloodline. Who are you? Do you even go here? I, I, I think it was Jay that actually ripped off uh, Sami mm-hmm. Zayn's um, t-shirt and then and then just presents him the Honore Use uh, <laughs> t-shirt. And you can just see how elated Sami Zayn is just to be a part of the bloodline as an Honore Use. He's like, just, man, am I going to get my ass beat right now by no, four, it, five, four guys? <laughs> I was like, what? But Roman legit said that he likes him. So it's it, it's great. It's, it's some of the best work that I've seen. It's hilarious, but it just fits this dynamic. Uh, go ahead, George. Uh, well, I was going to say, moving away from the Roman Reigns stuff, I did want to touch on that White Rabbit situation because I have heard uh, some rumblings about that. Well, while, while most of the stuff does seem to point to Bray, um, there is a c- small contingent that says this might actually have something to do with Karrion Cross, um, because there was a time on the Indies when he was wrestling under the name of the White Rabbit. Um so it could very well be something to do with him um, as opposed to bringing back Bray. Um, there was also a, f- a big fan thing going on where Bray could make it could, could, could come back, but also ha- bring um, guys like Karrion Cross, Dexter Loomis, um, Scarlet, all part, all, all as members of representing the various puppets in the Firefly Funhouse, um, which would be, pretty interesting and you know i'm not sure if that, if that's a way they want to do it um because i'm not sure how big on wwe is for factions but you know we'll see what happens um that's really the only thing i've heard other than that yeah i saw the Sami Zayn thing it got a huge pop from the crowd um i think it's only gonna last until they get through survivor series slash war games whatever they want to do with it yeah i was gonna bring up both of those uh items that you talked about regarding the whole white rabbit thing um it would be interesting if they do make his return with a stable you know i don't know who they'd really rival i guess yeah if he wants to go for the title then you know going against the bloodline would make sense but um 
I'm still curious to see where they push, uh, uh, what you call it. We we're just fucking talking about them. I forgot, uh, Dominic and, and all of them, like what's their purpose? You know, are they just judgment day? Judgment day? <laughs> are they just trolling Ray Mysterio like their entire run? Like what's, what's their, uh, ultimate, uh, end game here? Um, well, so, who, who would be a part of Bray's like faction? If, if you look well, at like uh george said it'd be carrying cross scar sure um uh dexter loomis i heard was was or people are saying dexter loomis um and i and there was somebody else and i can't remember offhand who it is um but it it was Braun. a pretty i think it was Braun. might have been Braun. um which that's a whole nother thing that I wanted to bring up actually. Um, Cause there is a picture circulating around now of a reunited Bray Braun and Eric Rowan. Um, and uh, basically just getting together to, um, you know, you know, as friends, you know, as what they are. Um, and obviously then the missing member of that was the late great Brody Lee, uh, formerly Luke Harper in WWE. Um but if they decided to bring back the Wyatt family like that, I, I don't know if you'd want to put Braun in there. It wouldn't make sense. He's just too big of a get at this point. But I could also see a returning Eric Rowan who would make sense. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if they go back to the Wyatt family, it, it just backtracks on everything that Bray has already done. I think you have to go back to the Fiend character in some sort of sense. I feel like if he just comes back as himself, it's kind of a waste now i know it wasn't triple h's deal and you know i think triple h is real big on and those guys in particular but i don't know it's just one of those things i i just hope if he does come back it is a solid enough run where yes it's a great idea the entire run they don't start off on a high note and they just shit the bed as like the weeks and months progress because that fiend character was fucking awesome for like the first year and then it just it got real ugly, like super ugly. I I don't want it to be embarrassing for Bray again because this would be what gimmick number four for him, right? So, Bobby, go ahead. Um, since we're on the Bray talk uh, topic here, um, I I don't see him going back to being a white member or white family guy. I don't see him going back as being a fiend. I see this being completely new. Him just um bringing something new to the table, um, bringing a new character. He's done it before. We've seen it with The Fiend. We've seen it with Bray Wyatt. Uh, when he first started off, he started off as um, Husky Harris, as an NXT guy, uh, part of the new Nexus. So I, I see him bringing this whole White Rabbit as a new character for us. And um, I'm interested to see where... Because it's going to be Bray. It has to be Bray. The, the signs are point. I also don't see this being an, a stable like you guys have been... I've seen the rumors, too. I've, I've seen... Braun, Eric Rowan, and, and the names you guys mentioned, Karrion Cross. I, I saw that, too, and it doesn't really make sense right now. Um, it looks like they're keeping Loomis on Raw with the whole Miz. Karrion has this thing going on with Drew McIntyre. And so, and Braun, he's a babyface. The crowd loves the guy. He's getting crazy reactions. So, for him to be kind of thrown into a, a, a stable right now doesn't really make sense for, for all these mem members right now. That's my two cents on Bray. But we can carry on with SmackDown here, Chad, if you want. Uh, I think that was it for everything that I had to say about it. Uh, I think. Uh, I just... Did we run down through the yeah. whole card? Or no? Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah we ran ran down through it, and uh, like the final final notes on um like the whole allegation of Bray, like as far as the White Rabbit. So, are we doing like an Alice in Wonderland like rabbit? Are we doing a Dottie Darko rabbit? Are we doing a Bug Bunny rabbit? Like what type of rabbit are we doing? Like that's that's what we need to figure out at the end of the day. We're doing Roger Rabbit. <laughs> oh, Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, there is there's so many damn right white rabbits that we need to to figure out which which rabbit that we're doing. Um if you do the Dottie Darko rabbit, that would actually be pretty cool. Um, so if you've seen the movie, but I have seen the movie. I don't understand that movie, but I've seen Oh no, movie. neither 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 have I. But but yeah, if if you were to do that, yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty sweet. Uh I guess we can move on. <laughs> I was gonna say, what do we got next? AEW, right? We will be moving on to AEW. We had Dynamite Grand Slam twenty twenty two. Uh so starting off the card, we had 
Chris Jericho defeating Claudio for the ROH World Championship. Uh, the acclaimed, and wait for it, wait for it. Censor me, Daddy! Won the tag titles off of Swerve in Our Glory, finally. The crowd was hot for that. Um, Pac defeated Orange Cassidy for the All Atlantic Championship. Tony Storm defeated Serena D, Britt Baker, and Athena for the AEW Women's Interim World Championship. And John Moxley defeated Brian Danielson for the AEW World of Championship. Three time champ for John Moxley. That's the first in company. Uh, thoughts on Grand Slam Part One? Well, you also forgot to mention the debut of, yes. S- of yes. Soraya. Yes. Don't you mean Paige? Soraya, Soraya. It's, it's Soraya. It, it's Soraya. It's, it, it it's is Soraya. Soraya. She, she herself has said it's Soraya. So. It's Soraya. Yeah, that, get... was, uh, that was kind of what we're going to dive into in a later segment. But, yeah, I was uh, very shocked, I guess, to say the least. Because there's a lot of rumors about her even being cleared to begin with. But she actually just tweeted yesterday, like, oh, don't believe the dirt sheets, blah, blah, blah. So... S- um, so, so about that. So she actually did state on her Twitter. She is not yet cleared. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, she is not yet cleared for in-ring competition, which is, which is partially the reason why she had no contact during that debut. Um, but yeah, she, uh, as far as what capacity she's being brought into that has not been revealed, um, but yeah, it was a very shocking debut, but I guess she's been in contact with AEW for quite some time. Um, I believe they said sometime in July is when talks started between them. Um, so it's it's certainly not something, you know, sudden. It's been in the works for a while. Um, you know, if she if she is going to return to entering competition, God bless her. Just I hope she, you know, doesn't get too crazy with it. Um, but if she's going to be in a more managerial role, then God, I hope to God she, she's managing Jamie Hayter. Um, that's just me. But uh, yeah, she, I'm not sure. Again, we'll see what happens. It's very, obviously it's a big deal because she is a high profile name um, in, you know, women's wrestling. Um, and if she is going to return to big, to entering competition, it's going to make headlines. Yeah. Oh, I got to say it. All Go I got to say Richard, is, sorry. yeah, no, no. All I got to say is Grand Slam. Like, I feel like All Out didn't matter uh, at, at the end of the day. Like, shout out to the Acclaim winning the championship belts. Um, like, I feel like Grand Slam was what All Out was supposed to be at, at the end of the day. With all the title changes, like, I was, I'm, I'm surprised that Chris Jericho won, but I'm not surprised at the same time. So this means that ROH is in the works. So Ring of Honor is in the works. So that you build a storyline with that, with Chris Jericho being uh, the Ring of Honor world champion. And then you have that that conflict with uh, Daniel Garcia, with him being a peer champion. So I see I see the vision in which Tony Khan is doing. Um, the Soraya debut was a, a pleasant surprise because I haven't seen Soraya in like ages so like I, I i'm pleasantly surprised and then i guess the championship with with john moxley and and brian danielson i really thought that brian danielson was going to be win the the, the title but apparently AEW has other things they wanted to see john moxley and i was pleasantly surprised on that i i don't know i i, I i'm I like John Moxley, but for for this, I really thought that this was Brian Danielson's time, and because that John Moxley had alluded that he was going on a six month or no six week vacation, uh, that's why I thought that was going to happen. But I, I I don't know. Go go ahead, Joey. Hey guys, uh, so Rich, you said pleasantly surprised. So I know I'm coming on late. Does that mean that you're happy Mox won? I would say no. Neg- 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 negative, 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 negative. Okay. Because to me, and as someone's already said this, I apologize, but I just don't really see what anything new can come from Mox being the champion, especially if 
you wanted the transitional run until MJF cashing the chip at full gear, or maybe if they have winter is coming. I just don't really see the point in it. And I'm one of the biggest Mox fans out there have been since he was Ambrose and they had him shooting ketchup and mustard at Kane, even during those dark <laughs> days. So for me to be like enough of Mox as the world champion, I think that the way just shows that even though he's trying and he's a workhorse that, we just need something different, especially with the way that the punk thing ended. And you already essentially said we were done with Mox. No, we're not. Just annoying and frustrating to me that Danielson didn't do this to have MJF be more of a heel when he does beat him. George, go ahead. So I know you said the Mox thing didn't really make sense, but the but with the way MJF's promos have been going, it seems like he really is setting up for that Mox MJF uh, fight down the line. Um but also with this run, you know, there's a couple of things to keep in mind here. One is that Danielson says has already went in interview and said he's okay not being the top guy in this company. He just wants to, you know, do what he can to help the company. And obviously, you know, if he doesn't want to be champion or, you know, and do all that comes with that, that's fine. But he can still make, put on a good match and, you know, get whoever that champ is, you know, more credibility, which he certainly did. As far as now, as far as like why Mox became champ in this instance, obviously the MJF angle plays into it. But I think for AEW, this is more of a hard reset on everything. And basically, let's get, you know, go saying them saying, let's go back to before the CM Punk situation and Mox is still your champ and we're going to move forward with that. And, you know, again, then we have a down the line MGF will take his will take his chance. Hangman just won that battle royal, which has a set date and time for a uh, title shot. So if something happens with Hangman taking that title shot, then you know, and taking the title off Mox, then MJF, you know, can do something there. Um, or, you know, we could see a triple threat match in this case, you know, this way MJF can just be the opportunistic asshole. We all know he is. Um, you know, there's just, there's a lot of ways to play this. And I'm, you know, I'm certainly curious to see how it goes. And obviously Mox does, you know, deserves a vacation because uh, he's put this company on his back um, for, you know, time and time again. Um but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just hope that you know this this all ends without any big controversy, uh, and then once the situation with the elite gets figured out, maybe we'll start see you know like Omega come back into the title picture, or you know possibly uh, you know somebody some you know somebody get down the line getting that big shot. I think it'll be MJF, and you know that's that's really all I'm gonna say about that. Um, I did want to mention one thing though, as far as the Chris Jericho situation, um, I I know what they're why they made him the world champion because they obviously want to get that TV deal for ROH roped in, um, but and then also the fact that now he is the Ocho, um, he's got it. If you if you haven't seen the new shirt for it, it's, it's awesome. literally the. It's and that literally, Chad's already bought it. The no, market he yet. is not yet. I'm it's, gonna buy it for you though. You fucking birthday bitch. yeah it's it's literally espn the ocho the logo but it's chris jericho <laughs> so funny man it is hilarious it's hilarious yeah um but yeah that's all i got i did want to well unless you want me to keep going here because i got some other crap i can man, talk you've about. been saying everything that i've been trying to say and and maybe not everything i agree with like the whole like jo Joey said it best and Joey's a really big Mox fan as he had mentioned and I like Mox too but his his last run it, it's just kind of stale to me I don't know I just don't see him as like an AEW champ compared to like the GCW shit we see like he's more of a deathmatch guy bloody just fucking doing all sorts of crazy shit like unsanctioned matches whatever you name it speaking of, I, speaking I, of which we, we got that upcoming match with him and Nick Gage still yes so yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, Danielson has just been I, every match he's had with a big name has just been an incredible match. And I feel like he's really a guy who could really lead the company and, and the younger guys into, you know, further success. I'm not saying that Mox can't do that, but if we were really going for a true reset before all out, I probably wouldn't have put Mox in that 
that situation to begin with. Because ultimately, before Punk got hurt, I mean, and I've been saying this, and I guess the rumors were just came out about it as well, that it was supposed to be MJF taking the title off of Punk at All Out to begin with, to get that fucking mega heat. So now, not only do we give MJF, uh, you know, his title opportunity further down the line, whenever that's going to be, and he's been talking about it nonstop for the last two weeks he's been on TV since he's been back. But now, and we're going to go into Rampage here, and, you know, spoiler for the Rampage card that we're not talking about yet, but Hangman also has a title opportunity. So now we have three guys going for the title, and... I don't know. That's I that's, just, that's my bone. That's my that's bone. That's my to bone pick to pick. Just, yeah. Like why? Like make one feud happen. You know, if it's gonna be MJF and Mox, make it MJF and Mox. Instead, we're gonna probably get Hangman and Mox, which we haven't had yet. So I'll give them that. But now we've got this third guy in the rafters. Whoever's gonna happen there. But. Now that I'm thinking about that, they could also have his posse go and just fuck that match up and cash in then and there. So I, I don't know. I, it's a, it's a rough situation for me. I just, I feel like, yes, it's a reset, but they're also already doing way too much shit for the main belt as it is. So, um, I hope they have it all under control. I feel like the last two weeks, three weeks, whatever it's been since we've lost the elite and punk have been really good TV. I mean, I honestly, I can't say I really have any complaints from what we've seen so far. I feel like everybody's stepped up and really proven that, you know, it's not about these four or five guys. You know, this company as a whole is very strong. We have a lot of talent and we can get shit done, but I question some of the moves. It's just kind of is what it is. George, go ahead before I talk for another 20 minutes. No, it's fine. I just wanted to clear, clarify something as far as the MJF situation is concerned. So the whole thing with the uh, uh, the poker chip thing, the cash in, um, it is not for a then and there match um, like the money in the bank cash in is. Got to sign a contract, and Tony Khan's got to approve it, right? Yeah, it's 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 basically when it, when MJF wants the match, he can then cash in. And it goes in proper, you know, contract signings, and then the match happens. So there's no surprise cash in. But, but the way it's going to fucking play out, and I know it, it's going to be exactly like the Money in the Bank type shit. Oh, well, fucking Tony Khan signed this 10 minutes ago. I Give me my match. Like, they could just do that. Like, it could just I, happen at any time. I, I don't. Like. I it. I don't think AEW will do that. However, I think what what might happen is MJF will set it up for the you know he'll set it up so that you know Mox has his match with Hangman, and then on the same night, MJF is you know or setting up for that same night, MJF will have a second match with a beaten down winner of that of the first match. So that I th- so whoever win you know so it'll basically be whoever wins the title on the first match is pulling double duty. So I think that's how MJF takes advantage of it, and of course then he'll get you know the firm involved and uh, go from there. Here's a quick um, thought: Have we had a, a triple threat match for the world championship yet? Um, yes, we have. We have. We have. It was it's... Omega. It was Omega. It was Pac, and it was. Um... Orange, Orange cast, yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh yeah. fuck, that's a bummer. Oh, they could do it again and make it better. Uh, don't get me that's wrong, good. the Omega, the Omega Pack OC match was really good. It was good, yeah. No, I, yeah. I completely, I completely it, forgot about that. It was, yeah. it was a pandemic era match, so that's why I kind of, yeah. you know, flew under the radar. Um, but uh, if, if uh, should we go through the rest of the Rampage card? Because I don't yeah. think we did. Yeah, let's go through Rampage real quick now that we've spoiled uh, three quarters of it. Um, I have to scroll through everything here, but it was pretty, uh, pretty predictable, I would say. Um, so we had uh, Darby Allen and Sting defeat the House of Black. Um, we had the Great Muda appear uh, with the save on Sting, which allowed them to uh, to win that match. We had Hook and Action Bronson defeat the JAS Angelo Parker and Matt Menard. We had Wardlow and Samoa Joe defeat Josh Woods and Tony Nese. And Jungle Boy defeated Ray Phoenix in their match uh, and got stomped by Luchasaurus post-match. And this was an interesting match. Uh, Eddie Kingston 
defeated Sammy Guevara via submission, but didn't release the hold. And they ended up reversing the call and giving Sammy the win. This one, that finish kind of pissed me off and we can talk about it more after I finish the rest of the card, but they had like 15 guys in the ring, like pretending to not know what to do to get Eddie Kingston off of Sammy. <laughs> like what the f- they were all just standing there until he stopped. It's really random. Um, uh, George, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no! I uh, finish up and then I come back to me. I want to. Yeah. Because I'm gonna go off. <laughs> um, the TBS title match: Jade Cargo obviously retained there against Diamante, uh, with Trina, and Trina turned heel at the end of that match. That was pretty funny. Um, and we finally get to the Grand Slam Golden Ticket Battle Royale, as we had just talked about. Hangman, um, was one of the final two with Roosh. Um. They had exchanged some blows on the uh, apron, and then uh, Hangman finally uh, eliminated him. So, uh, oh, one more match I've totally forgot. We had the lights out match between Powerhouse Hobbs and Absolute Ricky Starks. As you see here, my guy Ricky got his revenge there, and uh, that was that. So, uh, George, why don't you start since we were uh, a little excited about that one? Yeah, the uh, so I'm gonna go right into this is I, I don't even call I'm not gonna call this a bone to pick just yet, but th- this is uh, a thing. So the Eddie Kingston Sammy Guevara ending. So I'm gonna pre- preface this by saying there was a I guess some kind of announcement or something from Tony Khan saying he had basically challenged his referee corps to tighten up everything following what happened in the Jericho match with Claudio Castagnoli. So. Because of that, now the rules now, and I understand the wrestling rules are, you know, if you don't release the hold, you know, post post uh, match, then yeah, the, a decision can be reversed. It's a stupid thing, but I think it this is I think this is all fallout from the whole you know backstage incident that happened with them, and it was basically a way for them each to kind of get what they needed out of it. Uh, Kingston gets a win, and uh, you know then Sammy gets a cheap win. So, um, but then, yeah, it does show that the referee core is getting their shit together, but also it shows that they have no idea what the fuck they're doing to begin with. So I don't know this really, this whole, that whole post-match thing really looked like shit. Um, the only one who really came out looking good was Jerry Lynn <laughs> of all people. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then as far as the rest of the card goes, um, I mean, everything was pretty much, you know, whatever. Uh, seeing Great Muda was fantastic, um, and I didn't realize that he was that they had set up a match. Now it's going to be him and Sting uh, for their final match for Muda's final match because he's in the last year of his career in Japan. Point. In Japan, in Noah, I believe is where they're doing it. Um, so that'll be a really, really good thing to watch. Um, but the but the only, the one takeaway from that match though was the Julia Hart bump. Ooh, Holy, yeah. yeah. W- watching that live, I was like, she just cracked her skull open on that concrete with how she hit. It was it was hard to watch, and you know I'm glad she's okay. She said she's okay, um, but Jesus Christ, like. Yeah somebody needed to gimmick that table better or she needs to learn to take that bump better. She just overshot it. Like, yeah, by far. yeah, yeah, that was just, don't do that with, you know, please don't do that spot. It's what, you know, it, it, it was just, there was too much that went wrong with that spot and it could have, and it really could have been just a bad situation. And, Is and there the same? What, go ahead, Rich. No, I'm just saying she kept looking back to make sure that she was going to take the bump correctly, and yet she still overshot it. If you look at watch too previously. much of uh, Darby Allen there, she tried to cough and drop herself to death. Yeah, something like that. But like, here's my question too: with that, is do we know? And I'm not like a math person, but do we know? Like, is that side of the ring like the widest between like the space from the ring to the um, guardrail or is it like the other sides that are closer or shorter? Cause if they're going to do these bumps and they want to do them, pick the widest side. So nobody's head is within three inches of the dang guardrail. 
I believe well, it's not her... that there was the guardrail. It she like basically cracked her head on fucking concrete. Right, yeah. but I'm saying like the guard where well, well, essentially where or close to where the concrete starts and the mats end. Well, no, it's all equidistant as far as the ring setup goes, or you know, or at least as most part until people start getting knocked into it. Um, but this more had to do with where the table setup was, because the the plan spot is she's supposed to fall off the ring apron through the table. She over she basically overshot the table and instead of hitting the table like in the middle of her back hit it more towards her lower back and butt and basically caused her she basically power bombed herself with a table and and crack and just slapped her head on bare concrete um now if i'm AEW, i'm looking at that spot and saying we might need to extend ringside area so there's more mat there so you can actually do these kinds of spots um but I will say this, no, Arthur Ashe Stadium, where they were doing this, is a small venue, so that may not have been an option to do a wider area like that, but I think that could be fixed with ring a ring configuration um, and maybe moving timekeeper table over to that side if you're going to do that spot, just so you have a little bit more room. But again, this, this I will say this, this was a freak accident on a planned spot, and it, it certainly just was not done the right way and i in aw needs to look at that and, de- and decide hey what can we do to make something like that safer or should we even do that at all well they should have learned from the whole matt hardy deal uh what was it a oh. year and a half ago oh. that's what that's 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 exactly what i was gonna bring up chad like oh my seriously God. like when when that happened, I was like, "Oh, that's this is definitely like reminiscent of, of Mad Hardy. Like she shouldn't be taking that bump. Period. Like at, it was at unnecessary. The end of the day. It didn't do anything was, for the the match. Right? Okay. Me. Okay. Great Muda sprays Buddy Matthews in the face, and then she overshoots it. But yeah, that could have been a catastrophic injury. Uh, I'm glad that she's okay. Um, I still think that Rampage, even when it went to two hours, it's still just mid. <laughs> I, I I mean I did. I fell enjoy asleep it. during the second hour. I missed the end yeah, of the yeah. uh, the battle royal. I I fell asleep after Hangman started getting attacked. Yeah, I mean I it, it, it's it's too long. It's it's way too long. Well, the two hours was too long. It's a bad it's a bad spot, and it's just uh, I don't know what else to to say. It's just it's just seven bad. o'clock I, start if they're gonna do two hours needs to start. Seven. Sure, yeah, but it's a Friday night at nine o'clock right after SmackDown. Go ahead, Joey. So that and that's kind of my question is if you could change one or two things about Rampage to make it, I'm not saying must watch, but more watchable, what would it be? Would it be maybe like time and being live? Would it be day and being live? Well, like what are two things that, that you would tangibly change booking wise to help with Rampage? Because I feel like since basically since like punk debuted and that first week of rampage which i think punk's debut was like week three or four it really just fell off like it like the like it was like a penny on top of the grand canyon in terms of how like the height it was at george go ahead because i'm curious to hear answers to this like what two things would we change so here's the thing if you're going to keep this an hour do it live if you know, because you can still do dark matches, do dark tapings before that the proper live hour starts, but do live matches, but do less matches. So you could have longer matches, more meaningful matches, you know, because if you got an hour, you do like two 20 minute matches, do some segment stuff, you know, whatever, just do some, you know, or do like one 20 minute match, one segment, and then one longer match, whatever you got to do. Um, you can maybe throw a third match in there just as a quick, you know, you know, Jade squash or whatever, just get something out of the way. But I think what you need to do is you do need to get more bigger matches on that card and you need to make those matches matter. Um, put a title defense on there and actually have it a title change hands. It doesn't have to be, you know, the world title, you know, put the all Atlantic title on there, put the TNT title on there. Um, it's, you know, it's cause this is on TNT. I want to see the TNT champion. So get me, you know, get Wardlow on this show and have him just start doing stuff. Um, I think that's the, the key right now is you've got to make this, you have to get, and, and the other thing is you've got to get names on there. 
And, you know, because you're not getting the big names on this show, you're getting a lot of the mid card guys on Rampage right now. You know, as much as you want to say Sting is a big name guy, he is in the middle of this card right now. Um, you know, get Jericho in a match, get, you know, get uh, Hangman in a match, you know, get these guys in matches real and matches. make those, yeah, real matches that matter. You know, don't just throw it against, you know, random jabroni from the JAS match. You know, get me something good here. Give me something I can really sink my teeth into that I want to, I, that I make, that I need to watch. And the other thing is, don't be afraid to go against SmackDown. If compete for the time slot, if you're going to, you want to keep, keep this at an hour, that's fine. If you want to go to, but I think you need two hours for Rampage personally. But make that first hour matter and then make it go directly against the last hour of SmackDown and put your best foot forward, put that big match on and make people have to choose. Yeah, I think uh, George said pretty much everything that I would say. Uh, I think it has to be two hours, one. Two, definitely has to be live. Now, I know it's probably a logistics thing for AEW doing, you know, Rampage taped right after Dynamite. But, it, one, it's more tickets for them. Yes, they have to lease out, you know, an arena for an extra day or a couple days since they have the ring and all that shit set up. But it gives people a reason to go to Rampage. I, I feel like in the events that we've gone to... Like, thinking about having to do Rampage after fucking Dynamite is such a drag, because not only do you have Dynamite, you get the fucking dark matches. Uh, not to mention, sometimes after Rampage, Tony Khan decides to do fucking two or three uh, dark matches after that, too. So it's like, what the fuck are we doing here all night? Like, this could easily be a two-day thing. Kind of like some of their pay-per-views have been, you know, in the last year as well, just with the amount of the matches that are there. But um, I think going... Again, SmackDown is a good idea, especially if they move to a two-hour deal. Um, if you're gonna put, if you're gonna go one, you know, heads up with SmackDown, you gotta have some of your best guys on there for sure. Um, I do like that they have uh, kind of switched it up and put, you know, maybe not as much known guys on there. Um, I do like that Angelo Parker and Matt Menard have kind of been getting a little push because they're fucking hilarious. And I think they're they're pretty decent workers as it is. But um, definitely the TNT title needs to be defended on, on Rampage. That's where it debuted, right? You know, that was the whole purpose of that. Um, you've got to got to do regular defenses on that. It doesn't have to be every week. If it's every other week, you know, I'm cool with that. Um the Atlantic Championship, you can throw that on there. Um, the uh, women's secondary belt. I mean, you know, I feel like they should have at least one title defense every show. If there's enough titles to go around now. Fucking put it on a show and defend it. If it doesn't change hands, so be it. But at least do that. I mean, make some worthy content, you know, on there. So, uh, George, you wanted to add something else? <laughs> Yeah, I just want to uh, tack on. You said you meant you brought up the logistics thing, and I understand that. Yeah, it might be a lot. It might be tough to do a shorter show. Uh, you know the way they've got it spaced out like this. So the it, so here's the thing: if you want to do live, but you have to take logistics into account, maybe do back to back nights. You do your you do Wednesday, you still. Yeah, do Wednesday, Thursday. You, you, this or way, Tuesday, you, Wednesday as well. You could do that. Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday is a dead day, um, as far as I'm concerned. The only, th th I mean, the only, it's the only issue with like Tuesday, thir Tuesday or Thursday. So Tuesday is typically a dead day during the week for anything, and Thursday you you have to go up against Thursday night football right now. That so sure. there's the so that's like one of the big issues. Um, but you, you could also move uh, – you could move Dynamite around a little bit and then maybe do Friday, Saturday. Put Dynamite on Friday and then Rampage on Saturday. But do it back-to-back. -back. You stay in the same city for two nights. Let people come. You announce – and then just – this way you can also get more big stars, you know, because now you have a set place you're doing this. You know, you're not, you're, they don't have to work double duty on one night and put in a half-assed match later in the night. I, I think my concern with doing it on a Saturday is, you know, with Tony being so open with guys doing like 
other shows, AAA shows, whatever you want to call them, indie shows. I think that's definitely going to limit that. But also, Saturday is really predominant for pay-per-views in general. So um, I, I would see them moving, you know, their the Rampage show to Friday. So you get the Wednesday, Friday, Saturday deal, you know, with the, the pay-per-view schedule. But I feel like if they did move things around, they could definitely compete with NXT on Tuesday. I don't think there's really any doubt about that. Now that you bring up the Thursday night football deal specifically, um, even if they did move dynamite, cause Dyna- or dynamite's moving to Tuesday. Is it this week or in a couple weeks? For uh, I think, yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's either... due to basketball, uh, NBA. Yeah. It's NBA almost October w- so, when the season starts. So, I mean, if you're going to be fucking having to move time slots around for basketball in general, why not put it on a night? You're not going to have to move anything regardless, especially if they're only doing one hour rampage. And if it's on Wednesday during a basketball game, I mean, I don't see why ratings would be even significantly lower, but I, I don't know. There's, there's so many things they could do. I mean, we could sit here and talk about it all day, but well, 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 let me throw this at you. How would you feel about moving dynamite to Monday and restarting the Monday night wars? Way too soon. In my too opinion, soon. I think, it, it, and if anything, George, when you brought up whole uh, Tuesday being a dead night, my immediate thought was, I really enjoyed when it was the quote unquote Wednesday night wars for a year with NXT. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And I feel like going back to that wouldn't be an awful thing, especially if you want to make something mean more, as you said, by having it compete directly with SmackDown, compete directly at least an hour with NXT again to spark that conversation, the whole like dual watching. Cause I, I feel like a lot of especially diehard fans, which let's be honest, are who even watches Rampage right now really enjoyed that at least for me but you're shaking your head so talk to me buddy i mean i don't watch rampage live well live well we can't watch it live because original air (laughs) sure sure like i i I watch it and then like fast forward to some things until like it is not a product that i enjoy At, at the end of the day it's literally okay i feel like it is a an addendum to the YouTube shows that they have on dark. That's how I feel what rampage is. Uh, I, I do watch rampage live airing. So just for the record, well, ble- bless your heart, George. That's I how I, to, if I don't fucking fall asleep by then. <laughs> but yeah, the, the two hour thing, it was just, Oh man. Yeah. I, I too was falling asleep on that. And it's, it, it's just, uh, it's gotta be earlier. I think it just comes. It, it, yeah. It, it's just a bad, an hour. It, it's a bad time slot. Like, no one's watching television at nine o'clock at night on Friday. Any yeah, other thoughts? Be... <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say, I mean, yeah, it, I think this was just an unfortunate timing issue this with this whole situation. Um, but it's definitely something that they need to look at and say, are we, are we going to keep doing it like this or do we want to possibly go ahead and d- compete directly. If we, if they're not willing to compete directly, then just shelve rampage at this point, it's just not worth it. Um, or possibly move it to YouTube and just make it a part of AEW dark. They don't need any more oh, YouTube man. shows. Man. No, no, I, no I more. Think... No, <laughs> no. Well, well, I'm saying, no, I'm saying like replace dark with rampage this way. You, and then just make rampage a bigger YouTube show. No, shout out to all of the fans that were there at Grand Grand City Slam. Like, you were there from probably like six o'clock Eastern till midnight. You were there Easily. six six hours watching all of this content. Like, whoever stayed there, that is my chef's kiss. I know we're going too quickly, but that is my chef's kiss to you all because, damn, that's all I gotta say. Man, we're gone one week. Everybody forgets the fucking order of the show. Unbelievable uh anything else <laughs> anything else all right we'll do impact real quick uh bobby didn't watch this week you fucking mark so i'll go over the uh, uh look at him he doesn't even have a reaction to that he's probably not even listening Bob right hates now. us i think he hates us i know um so i'll just go over that i didn't get to watch it either because look at him laugh really... by the way he's he an odd child. Child. Um, I'm watching the game sorry I he's watching the game. I'm watching this crash rest of a fucking NASCAR race that started at four o'clock. Like, wait, what? What game is on? <laughs> Denver Broncos and the 49ers. Oh. oh, who's shit? I don't have money on. I don't bet on things anymore. All right, we'll do uh, impact here real quick. 
Uh, and then I guess we'll just move on to Chef's Kiss and all that fun shit since we've already pretty much talked about a lot of the things going on. Um, Brian Myers defeated Bupinder for the Digital Media Championship match. Uh, Jordan Grace defeated Zicky Dice. Uh, Black Tarus defeated Trey M- Miguel, Alex Zane, Laredo Kid, and Mia Yim. Um, Heath defeated PCO. We had a number one contenders match, uh, Aussie Open versus Motor City Machine Guns. Motor City Machine Guns won that match. And then we had a contract signing um, in which Sammy uh, Callahan signed a contract in blood um, for the match at uh, the Barbed Wire Massacre. Uh, Bobby, you got any thoughts on that since you're the uh, impact guy here? I did not watch Impact, but I did catch Victory Road, some of it, before I fell asleep. But um, it was an all right show from what I saw. Again, I was very tired, so I didn't really catch much of it. Um, I guess uh, match of the night on that show probably would have been that uh, triple threat revolver. Had like nine people in the match. Uh, Frankie Kazarian won it. Uh, so AEW will be representing um, at Bound for Glory in a couple weeks. And then um, thought the main event, uh, Bar Wire Massacre, uh, it was all right. It wasn't, it wasn't like the, the other Bar Wire Massacre matches. Um, the ropes weren't covered in Bar Wire. Um, they half ass covered them. It, it looked very cheap. But I'm not going to discount what the three opponents or the three men that did in the, in the ring, uh, Moose, uh, Steve Macklin, and... Um, Sammy Callahan, um, uh, they did well. It was a decent hardcore match, but sorry guys, I didn't. I'm tired. I, I got back to work this week and they've been kicking my ass. So, it's shout out good. to Bobby Fish on Victory Road. Oh, who? Yeah, no, nobody cares about it. What a fucking scrub. <laughs> nobody <guy>. cares about. <laughs> it. Cares. Oh, I would die for Triple H shows up on Impact. Get fucked. Just, just like I said earlier, how I'm a very big fan of Mox. I was keyword past tense here and was a big Bobby Fish fan in Ring of Honor. That guy, I don't know like, if he just ran out of Just for Men and his hair just went all gray and then he just flipped out and had a midlife crisis. But, dude, that guy went off the rails. I don't, like, the whole conspiracy about him trying to get people to, like, leave and go back to NXT or WWE. I don't get what the heck happened to that guy. Um, all I got to say is good riddance. And I never imagined myself saying that about him because I really enjoyed him. And to see him just have that happen, there was a hilarious picture I sent to the group chat about him, his fake phone or Triple H's phone being flooded with texts from Bobby being like, boss, you there, man? Adam and uh, Roddy are, or was it? Adam and Kyle are out, but I'm in if you need me. I'm ready to come fly back. Please, boss, cracking me up. So Bobby Fish figure out whatever you need to get to calm you down like have a snickers dude it's all right, i can't say. even see it on my phone but yeah have a snickers funny. you're not you when you hu- when you're hungry bobby you're waiting for triple h <laughs> no, for hey, triple no. h bro hey hey you said bo- nobody cares about bobby fish abe lincoln cared about bobby fish <laughs> fuck bobby fish uh, yeah, for for real though, no, for for real though, the Bobby Fish situation is fucked up. Um, Bobby Fish, Bobby Fish, Bobby Sushi, Bobby Fish. No, nah, well, I want because for those who don't know, because we'll let's touch on this real quick here because we got the time. This was part of our uh, next segment as well. So, well, I'll just get into it, I guess. Yeah, but, go into it. Yeah, so so the thing with Bobby Fish here is. He left, so he basically just chose not to re-sign his contract with AEW. That was per- his decision, not AEW's. Um, supposedly, the reason he left was because the bu- the Young Bucks refused to put over Red Dragon. That, and then now with Kyle Riley dealing with some sort of injury, I believe it's a neck injury with Kyle, he's going to be out for quite some time. So there really wasn't much for Red Dragon to do and Bobby Fish is not going to go on a, any huge singles run so he so he leaves and you know decides I'll go back to I'll try to go back to WWE WWE doesn't want him because for what you know obviously there's nothing for him and it's, you know he's not young he's 45 if I'm not mistaken um and basically just you know and then from what I'm understanding, he did try to convince Adam Cole and Bobby and uh, Kyle O'Reilly to come back with him, 
but they either them or somebody else in the locker room went to Tony Khan about the whole situation and basically said, yeah, this is, we we're staying here. We're happy in AEW. So Bobby fish essentially had no ground to stand on. And then because he tried to screw over, you know, AEW by trying to get uh, Cole and O'Reilly to leave. Now, any chance of him coming back to AEW is completely gone. Um, you know, as much as we want to in wrestling, you want to say never say never and things happen, you know, and money talks, but in this situation now, I think Tony Khan is the kind of guy where he's going to be like, I don't really care. You're not making me any money and you never made me any money. You never drew a dime for me. So what do I care? So I don't think so. Bobby fish, I think shot himself in the foot here. And then when WWE didn't want him, it's well, who does want me? And, you know, it's, you didn't have a lot of options left. You had impact, you had the NWA or, you know, Japan, you want to go to Japan, but, uh, Again, it's there wasn't a lot of places he was going to end up that would still that would take a forty five year old broken down wrestler, and yeah, it's it sucks. Not to mention him calling out CM Punk for a shoot fight as well. <laughs> oh my God, pl- that whole the, yeah, please. I almost the day want after that, it was confirmed he was released too. I I almost want that match to happen just for it to happen because it would that would be a pay-per-view draw someone book you know whoever books that would be you know would make some bank you know but again it's it it, what because we don't know what the whole situation with punk is you know if he needs a dime he'll do that match but you know who knows what's going on he's got mindy's bakery on the speed (laughs) dial for to be a part owner so he he'll, he'll be okay with money i think yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and then, then his wife bit like makes comics, right? So, like, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, she, well, she makes comics. I she, I think, wrote a book. Um, I don't. I honestly, crazy I, is my superpower for talking about a, a AJ Lee. I, I think it was yeah. a bestseller. It did pretty pretty well critically. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, she's got a lot to talk about as you know a women's wrestler in a unique time in women's wrestling. Um because she basically was the reason WWE had to leave the divas era and move into the, you know, the modern era that we have now. Um, and thank God she did. But again, she was ahead of her time in a division that didn't have any proper women's wrestlers. Chad. Uh, sorry. I was watching this race. So hopefully it's going to end. Um, so, uh, I know we talked about uh, Bobby Fish. We had Malachi Black uh, was granted his release. Um, was it last week now? I think it was a week ago. So uh, that was one of the, the hot topics. It sounds – it originally played off as he needed time off. Tony Khan didn't want to release him. Um, and then Malachi actually had this long Instagram post that uh, – he posted on his account and he was kind of upset one about booking, but not only that, just the way uh, news dropped about, you know, his thoughts and what's going on in his life. So he's pretty, pretty much unhappy with AEW at this point. So uh, his release was granted said, you know, I just need to recharge my batteries. Basically you'll see me soon. So we'll see if and where he pops up next. Um, Seems like buddy Murphy is going to be taking some time off as well. Um, where does this leave Brody King? You know, the whole House of Black deal here. What, uh, what's happening with that? Because I think, uh, it just came out Tony trademarked, uh, House of Black, too, if I'm not mistaken, right? So that's happening. Obviously, we got into Soraya. Um, lots of weird. Soraya. 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 Whatever, dude. Same shit. It's the same. She put it on her Twitter. Okay. I'm just trying to help her out. Okay. All right. That's Soraya, a... my bad. It's not the first time you're, I've heard you're, you're, you're okay. You're okay. You you um, pronounced my name wrong. Okay. All right, Dick Wallace. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be a great rapper name, honestly. Dick Wallace. Oh, How? Fuck. All right, we're How? Dick Wallace and Bobby Aprecio. <laughs> what? Don't put Bobby in this. Bob doesn't give a fuck about anything going on right now. He's watching football. He doesn't give a shit. Uh, all right. Any other thoughts? Anything else you wanted to add here real quick? 
All right, let's move into Chef's Kiss. Oh, Please. sorry, hold on. Oh, you fucking got me last minute. Go ahead. Sorry, I was choking on a fucking cupcake. <laughs> from Mindy's Bakery? What the fuck? I, no, from Aldi. <laughs> um, I was going to say, the uh, so I have, other than the uh, request for releases that we know about, the situation with Buddy Murphy and now the potential, you know, trademarking of the House of Black name and all everything around these, you know, signings and releases. Um, it does seem that there are some unconfirmed rumors of other wrestlers within AEW asking for release. Um, for obviously for for you know for various reasons, you know, TV time, um, uh, money, you know, just general unhappiness, what have you. But I think that underlies a bigger problem with AEW right now, and it's something I really wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, what is what do you feel is the issue keeping you know AEW from you know f- from featuring most of these talents that are unhappy, um, or what is you know something that AEW can do to help keep these talents happy? Um, I, you know, is it more match time, more TV time? Is would another show um, outside of Dynamite and Rampage help, uh, Joey? Honestly, it's kind of a couple things. I think once Ring of Honor gets a TV deal, you need to take, and I get they have some contracted talent. For instance, Stone Castle and the Boys has been barely on AW TV, but they have ROH deals. People like that. I guess people already signed specifically for ROH, but. You need to take, and I'm being dead serious here, a quarter of the talent signed under AEW contract and make them just ROH. Once ROH gets a show, whether that shows an hour, whether it's 90 minutes or two hours, you need to thin that roster a little bit. And if you want to have some crossover, fine, but they're either going to be in ROH or AEW, some crossover maybe, or like when a feud ends, you could go back to AEW. I don't know. That's the biggest thing I think is, Time, yes, but also just honest communication to be like, hey, we're going to feature you heavily at first, and then we'll see what happens with the crowd and your reactions. Because I think one of the best examples of this, of someone being debuted pretty well and going to get a good crowd reaction, and now is barely featured at all is Ruby Soho, who I know a lot of us like. And she's too nice of a person probably to complain to the dirt sheets about it, but I'm, I'm betting you she ain't happy. With how well, things have she, gone in the year. She, well, she's injured now, so. But, but I mean, even before that, though, man, like she was barely featured, and even though she came in pretty hot and with a lot of steam and fan support for finally getting "quote unquote" a legit shot that lasted what two months. So that's what I'd say. ROH needs to be a show, and maybe that's how the TK's control. Have a quarter of the roster go there. And just be honest when communicating and be like, hey, we're going to give you a shot. And if you get over, great. And if not, we'll keep you on the roster and you might get another chance later on. But we're going to go with the hot hand. Just be up front. Well, here's the thing. Like, if you don't have an ROH deal for whatever reason, it's not beyond you to just make another show or to make Rampage bigger, like we said. Do before. they? But do they have the, the, the TV time to do that, though? Because I feel like the next TV time you get, should be for ROH. That's just my opinion because the oh, sparseness I'm, I'm, of, of these belts being defended, it's really not, it's, it's losing all the steam and not that people had from their pay-per-view a few months ago. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you in any sense. Something needs to be done with the ROH brand. And if, and again, if, if you want to replace Rampage with ROH, the cha- you know the t- you know and do that. That's I f- I would support that. If you want to at least get ROH a YouTube show for now until you can make things happen down the line, do that. But you got to start featuring these ROH talents. You can't just let them go off and do whatever. Bring them in for like a battle royal one off and then forget about them. You know, I, and again, I want ROH to succeed. I want. Because I, I want AEW and ROH to be important in the wrestling world. And I think they need to be important. But right now they're not important. And it sucks. I There's a agree. whole lot. Yeah. There's a whole lot going on with like the the Warner NBC studio, like the whole shift 
and we don't even know what what that's going to look like in the next couple of years. Yeah, the Warner Discovery that's, possible merger. Yeah, and all that yeah, the mergers. Yeah, so we was, we don't even we don't even know what's going to look. Like. I would say, who's buying them? Is it Disney? No, it's no, no, it's, it's not uh, Disney. Discovery. Well, the Warner is Discovery already. Uh, yeah, so it's it's NBC, any NBC, NBC Universal, yeah. Universal. Okay. So oh, that would mean okay. that would that would mean that Triple H would be like working with Tony Khan. So that is the the interesting conundrum that we have um, for the future of wrestling, because what does that look like in the future? Like one of them, well, if you have two entities of wrestling, one of them has to like, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, it's I know the McMahon T- pulling strings in the background all along. Yeah. Well, I know TK has said that he'd be open to collabing with WWE. So I, whether or not WWE would ever do that is no. another story. But I know. But if no, <laughs> but, but but could you imagine? You know, I can't. I can't genuinely imagine. I, I can't. I can't see that in no. in any any multiverse universe, whatever verse. Mickey James doing the the rumble spot which was impact to be fair and they've played nice a couple times for minor things with impact i think is the closest thing we would ever get to a quote-unquote forbidden door with AEW, especially with like just the i, I don't know like it the, feels like there's heat obviously whereas impact it's like oh we pity impact we'll throw them a bone every once in a while yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Impact is really the redhead stepchild of the wrestling world right now. Um, as much as everybody likes to say that, you know, AEW is uh, Tony Khan's home for released wrestlers, Impact is really the place where wrestlers are going to die right now. And it's not a good situation over there. As much as I know, Bobby's well, they, they, they have the best product from what I've seen. It, as far as when we went, when we went to that, the show that was one of the best that was one of the best live productions that we've seen right but that's but well you're i wasn't with you guys sure Um, sure no but 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 that's the thing i i wasn't with you guys but nor do i have the option to watch it at at any point because impact doesn't you know they don't they don't tape live they don't have a live show and their only show is the tapings, which air on like Axis, I believe, is the channel that has them right now. And to get Axis is a, is another tier up on my cable plan, I believe. Same. I got Jonathan's login, so but I I've yeah. watched once. But it. But again, it's not it's not an easily accessible product, which is what's hurting Impact right now. So if Impact wants to be a major player like they think they are, they need to get an actual TV deal. And the problem is there's not a lot of mainstream networks that are going to pick them up Um, just because of how not just because it's Impact, but because wrestling in general isn't the biggest ratings draw like it used to be. You know, this isn't the 80s and 90s where you were pulling the millions and millions of people watching. You know, you're lucky to pull a million now with some with you know with AEW. Two million is a hard thing to get in WWE. What the hell is Impact could possible pull? You know, you you would be pulling rampage numbers at best with Impact. A couple hundred thousand probably. And that's not enough to to justify it, it. You know, having its own show on a major cable network. It'd be like once every two weeks if that if that's yeah. an option. Yeah, the, the, like the only thing I could compare comparatively say would be like you have to do with and I'm gonna this is a throwback I'm about to say if you guys even remember this is what MTV used to do with Wrestling Society X and you know ha- tape a whole season and then put it up on, as a weekly, you know, but that's again that's something impact has to has to do they need to start trying to negotiate to a better network a more accessible network it doesn't have it may not be a big network but if you can at least get on a easily accessible network impact can at least try to grow and then be in that conversation later on when they want to move to a better network so again so again that's that's all impact stuff i'm i'm not up on whatever happens with impact and i can't be even if i wanted to be i couldn't be unless you know unless there's somebody uploading like you know 
videos on YouTube of it or something. But again, not an easily accessible product hurts the product. And, you know, that's what I worry about is going to happen with ROH going back to that is when Tony Khan gets this sorted out, if he doesn't get ROH on a major network or at least you know, an accessible network, it's got to go to, you know, YouTube where it can be accessed or, you know, if they, or if they do push some sort of streaming platform, I don't know, does Turner have one or will they have one? Can it's you get it on be, that? Uh, whatever HBO and Discovery merges into. Yeah. That, and that. The, right. Which so sucks, that, so HBO Max is super badass. Like it's one of the much easier uh, platforms right now to really stream anything on because you can actually fucking see what you're looking at. It's not cluttered. Well, you know, here, well, here's an idea, and I and I'll throw this one out there as because hell, we're streaming on it. What if they went to Twitch? Impact Didn't they that. do that? Yeah, Impact I was gonna say, that, and they got banned yep. a couple of times, I think. Uh, well, well, it was for RVD and his uh his girl. I remember in a hot yeah. tub that got him banned. <laughs> well, yeah, but but here's the thing: you can potentially go to Twitch with you know ROH, um, just you know. I Don't think they're do better th- off on YouTube, if I'm being completely honest with you. Just the things that Twitch has been doing lately, and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, and I'm not, yeah, I know we're not going to get into that. We're not going to get into yeah. that, but yeah. But uh, but you know, we're streaming we, we love right we now. love Twitch. We love Twitch. Let me just yeah. preference that we love Twitch. Pray, praise Daddy streaming. or Mommy, whatever the name of Twitch Twitch founder is, right, Rich? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Twitch. Uh, thank uh, you. Well, yeah, say there's Bob, a say thank you, Twitch. There, there's a founder of Twitch, and then there's who owns Twitch. Daddy and the Twitch? guy, uh, the, yeah, the guy who owns Twitch is uh, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> so. Bobby, please thank Jeff, Jeff Bezos. He thank you, Daddy voice. Bezos. I ain't saying. Yes, scissor. Scissor. Fuck them kids is what he says. Scissor, scissor me, Daddy Bezos. <laughs> um, hey, George, real quick, man. I'm just going to say, man, Impact, they have a YouTube channel, and they do upload segments a lot the they upload a lot uh, yeah they and sure as, they sure as hell don't promote it <laughs> it's if you subscribe to the channel they do i do get the they promote their stuff on instagram a lot that's about the only place i see it i don't really see it on twitter yeah that's the problem you got to be on twitter these days if you want somebody to see shit because i'm not going to no instagram all right but are you on youtube though i go on youtube but i never get recommended wrestling content I mean, all you have to do is type in Impact Wrestling. If you're, if you're curious on what's on the product, it's on well, there. Well, let me ask you this, Bob. Are they uploading just clips and segments, or are they uploading no, matches I'm, and I'm shows? Sure. I'm looking at it right now, and they got a full full matches from, from Impact. Aussie Open versus Motor City Machine Guns. They got Keith versus PCO in a street fight, and it's 15 minutes. 15 minutes, 11, it's full-length segments here. Okay, so, but they're not uploading, like, the whole show. It's just individual Those, Well, matches. here's the thing. They, you since, I mean, YouTube is big now, but they got memberships. And so, in order for you to watch the show, you have to be a member. And, <laughs> and uh, they got two tiers. You got your basic tier, which is a dollar a month. Uh-huh. If you There's guys don't a have catch. a dollar in our, in our uh-huh. chat. One yeah. dollar, Rich. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm getting, uh-huh. getting paywalled out here. Getting paywalled out George, here. But... George. Oh, we got George, George slander say... in the chat right now. All right, guys. George, didn't you say access is another package in your in your cable bait, which would be another like 20 to 30 bucks? I, I mean, I don't know. Okay. Well, okay. Let me, let me run this back here. <laughs> as much access as I have to like upper tier cable stuff and then YouTube and what have you, not all fans have that same access, all right? So you got to think about the average fan and what the average fan is willing to go to, go through to get, you know, to, you know their content. Are they willing to get that upper tier cable package? Are they willing to go on YouTube? Are they willing to do what it takes to see it? Not everybody's as a hardcore fan as you, Bob. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. But you're Don't, complaining like, hey, they're not doing anything. And I'm like, dude, it's on their channel. It's there. They're just not looking but- for it, George. I don't yeah, have give right? me but give me a re- <laughs> give me a reason to look for it is what I'm saying. This is about All to right? be cut up and put on Rich, YouTube. Rich just said, he he just, just told you there are full matches, man. I, we went to the right. amazing show last month. Was that not enough for you to be like, oh, you know what, the guys went to the show. Let me let me tune in. No. I, 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 no, I don't know. I need a con- I need consistency. <laughs> One good show does not a great product make. Nah. Because I've been, fun. 
you just don't want to watch. And I get it. It's fine. It's not for everybody. Not and not everybody here watches NWA. I watch the NWA. Fuck, I don't. Here. I don't know shit about it. I the see product is not good though, it. Bob. To be fair with NWA. No, absolutely not. But hey, it's wrestling, right? And if I if we're, we're, if we're a wrestling podcast, I'm gonna go I, ahead and I'm yeah. gonna I mean, I mean, listen. I I only have so much time in a week to watch anything. You know, so you got to really convince me to watch your product. And with Impact, you know, on a week-to-week basis, I don't know if there's enough there to keep me interested. That's why I don't really seek it out. Yeah, you can have that one great match every once in a while, and maybe I'll go check out that clip at some point. But do I really want to get invested in the product if you're not putting it on a consistent basis or don't have the ability to put it out on a consistent basis? You know, that's the, I mean, that's part of the reason ROH kind of fell apart at the, you know, in its initial uh, uh, incarnation is because they couldn't consistently put out a product that everybody wanted to see on a weekly basis. You know, and that's why their TV deal never took off because, you know. There's so that, that, and I think there's also a bunch of like, um, politics because i i know whoever owned sinclair right i think they yeah. wanted they didn't want anything with them anymore right now impact has anthem and they're put they're not pumping in a lot of money but it's they're supporting them you know they they got the support from anthem and if if they're willing to give them the support i'm all for it unfortunately rrh didn't get the support from sinclair but tony khan came in and picked them up it's just going to be time for them to finally get a home on tv yeah, and listen. If if Impact it finally comes into its own, God bless them. That's all. But they have to think about what it not you know what the average consumer who does may not have a lot of money these days. God, because inflation being what it is, what are they willing to do to see your product? And you have to take that into account, and especially now with cable being what it is and how much cable costs, a lot of people aren't going to pay for cable. You know, they're going to go to streaming services. They're going to go to YouTube, you know, if you're on and if you're because they're not going to pay, you know, however much it is to get to that upper tier cable level to just watch on X to watch tape shows on Axis. But if you put out a live product on YouTube that people can get invest, invested in on a weekly basis. Yeah, that's something I'll, I could maybe check out, especially if you put it out, you know, when I, you know, at a time when I can watch it and make a VOD available to me. That's a way to get into it. You know, that's. That's one of the reasons that I watch like New Japan is because even if I miss an event, the VOD is still there where I can go back and watch an entire show, you know, and it's in it, even classic shows. And it, as far as I know, Impact doesn't do that. They don't have, you know, a, I don't know what their library looks like, you know, after the whole TNA thing and now, you know, being bought by Anthem. I don't know what the tape library looks like or who owns the tape library. So, again, these are things that, you know, Impact has to do if they want to, you know, be, be bigger in their space. So, again, I'm not saying that they're not an important entity in the space, but they are not acting like a major player or, and don't seem to have the ambition to grow into being a major player. That's just my two cents on the whole matter. What's George doing in the impact zone? <laughs> Taking a shit. <laughs> oh, God. All right, moving on. Cue the music for uh, Chef's Kiss. Hello, Chef Bob. How are you, sir? It's another day, Joe. It's another day. I didn't day. even give you the cue, and you fucking interrupted me again, you fucking idiots. Go ahead. Some rude customers, <laughs> as always, Bob. I apologize. God damn it. Half. Uh, so, Bobby... Your chef's kiss, actually, to continue with the impact love-hate fest that we have going on here in the kitchen. Uh, Bobby, yours is about one of our favorite topics in chef's kiss land, and that is the fashion choices of wrestlers. So, Bobby, whose fashion do you want to support this week? My fashion taste of the week is going to come from Sammy Callahan. The reason why is Joey, man. I mean, you and me were both pretty fans of this one certain wrestler that he he cosplayed of indeed and so he cosplayed as mick foley slash cactus jack and he was rocking the flannel he had the the wanted shirt and so sammy was he was he was cactus jack for the night and again this was because he was in this barbed wire massacre match and again mick foley cactus jack is synonymous for these kind of matches so it was fitting for sammy to come out there and pay tribute to mick foley and it was nice seeing him out there in the outfit he rocked it he looked good in it you know and i have the same outfit too 
So yeah, and to be fair, Bob, this was also during that three-way barbed wire or attempted barbed wire match. You said that that impact had as yeah, well. Correct. So if, if you're gonna pull out extra gear to pad up your bear skin, it's fully me. always had a good way of doing it. Flannel's a little thicker than regular fabric, so why not? You know. <laughs> uh, so my chef's kiss, actually, though it's not fashion related, but it is related to uh, my baby NXT. Joked with you, Chad. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, we're gonna rename this the Joey Loves NXT More Than Life segment. No, life's okay right now. So, but uh, my bone, I do have later on have a bone to pick with NXT. So if you want to call that Joey's critique of NXT, we'll do that. But we're, we're going to give you your own spinoff show. How about that? My, my love of NXT this week is I was getting throwback, not to McFoley, but to some WCW style cruiserweight opening matches. And this week, uh, Axiom, who is one of the least interesting characters I might have seen this this century, this millennia. Uh, he just likes math and he wears a mask. Wow, what a gimmick. And he's working with and having a best of three series with Nathan Frazier, who basically is like a mini Seth Rollins. He was trained by Seth as well. He does a superplex in Doom, not a Falcon Air, but sort of like a, a um, I don't know what you want to, what was Cody's f- finisher's name in AEW? Crossroads. 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 He, he, he does a superplex into a crossroad. It looks really nice. But they had their second and their best of three matches. And the near falls, zero botches. And in the week, and specifically the dynamite this week, that was full, full of botches. To see this match look so crisp with two guys that aren't the best on the mic, I just want to give a chef's kiss to that because that is the wrestling, if you will, that really, I think, got me at least first into it as a little boy watching WCW and WWF in the late 90s. Bob, do you have any comments on those two characters or just this style of match that we really don't get that much anymore? No, Joe, unfortunately, I did not catch NXT this week. Sorry, buddy. But in terms of, but you like WCW, though. But You've seen those cruiserweight matches. Of, I mean, I do have to go and watch the match, though, for me to really compare it to like a, like a Ray and Hoovy match or a Ray Psychosis or a Super Calo match from WCW. I would have to, I have to, I have to go watch the match on uh, NXT, Joey. Sorry, buddy. That's so cool. I'm, just, Bob, I'm trying to keep you involved, my, my sous chef, my co chef. You, you liked those matches in the 90s, though, correct? I did. I absolutely did. That's how you started off hot in the 90s, man. You throw on a cruiserweight match and, and Eric Bischoff and WCW Nitro did it well every Monday. And it really was a way to break up. What, what, what often was a silly WTF promo fest that Nitro was for the oh, three yeah. hours that it used to yeah. be. Yeah, no, we complain about the opening segments nowadays. WCW was doing it 20 years ago, too. <laughs> yeah. Chad, is this in relation to our chef's kisses so far, or yes. is it your own before our combo? Uh, no, I just wanted to add that Axiom is like the shittiest name because it's unoriginal and it's literally a fucking extended warranty company for vehicles. So, just I mean, Fandango was a movie reviewer, movie ticket company. That was he too. A pretty good career out of that it. That was to be too. Fair. That was too. I'm still going to talk shit about it though because it's in my line of work. So. All right, well, mini bone to pick from uh, Chad not a bone to pick, just, eating his chicken bones. Just get a fucking new name. It's just all I'm going to say. I doubt they will. No, but, uh, Bobby, our combo is in relation to what our combo was in the previous show about the usage of hip-hop and R&B rap stars. Indeed, Specifically, man. the past two weeks, Action Bronson. Bob, what was your opinion on how they used Action Bronson in the video montage last week and the match this week? Great. I thought the video montage was great. And what he did in the ring, granted, it wasn't much, but it was it was good. It was for what he needed to do. Not everybody needs to go in there and do her karanas, jump off the top. Canadian road. destroyers. I mean, like, dude, that's that's not necessary for every celebrity wrestler. Action knew his role and he played the part well. He played the power man um gimmick well. He's power slammed um Angelo, right? Or Ma- or Daddy Magic. It was one of them. And and, and them. here's the thing too, Bob. Those were the right guys to have in this match. I, I, I truly think mm-hmm. in the last year and a half, they've been the most important signing for AEW. To have them in there, they know their role, the lower mid-card jabroni, wannabe henchmen, and they do it so well with their personality, 
so to have like celebrities in there interacting with them, much like how Heath Slater would get his butt kicked by all the legends yep. a decade ago in WWE. These two guys are able to do this so well. Right. And it really was a breath of ironically, as you said, Bob, fresh air to see a celebrity not trying to outperform everybody on the show by doing frog splashes or four fifties. Mm-hmm. It just, I know it wasn't much, but it really fit what the, the connection between he hook and Taz was and that FTW mentality. So my chef's kiss to action Bronson. And I think he's the first wrestler in some time, at least in AEW to sing his own entrance music on the way to the ring. I know Jericho sings Judas, but it's not live as he's walking to the ring. So Bronson, good stuff there. Bronson. Anything else, Bob, before we get where you let Chad talk again, if his hand's up for that? Um, I mean, keeping with the music, um, they brought in Trina, and she was with the baddies, um, well, turn or whatever the hell that was at the end. But hey, like, again, we're, we're, they're bringing in more hip-hop artists. Westside Gone was at ringside once again. Yes, he was. Um, he was at ringside, and they also brought out DJ Woo Kid. Woo Kid, and... um. Fabulous. So, hey, man, AEW, keep Woo! Woo. Keep they on they, they keep doing it, though. And I'm so happy that we've brought this up in the past at least two or three times on the show. Maybe not in the chef's kiss, but in the past couple of months. Right. Rich loves it, too, with his Dalton Castle boys response. And I am just thrilled and hope that this continues and continues in the right way. So that's our chef's kiss for this week. Can you also say anything to add? Great. If not, I think, Chad, what do we got next, good sir? Uh, well, I was going to add my chef's kisses. For Go for sure. it. Uh, mine was definitely, well, I've got two. So one, uh, Sammy Zayn getting his fucking T-shirt from Roman Reigns. By far. Because you didn't know where that segment was going to go. But you also know that Roman likes Sammy. And, you know, it was like that, oh, this is going to take a real dark turn to, oh, he actually loves Sammy, like, real quick. So the shirt was really cool. Uh, Seeing Jay rip off the other shirt, though, was really funny, too. So I just want to point that out. And then um, I've got the sound clip. Censor me, daddy! The acclaimed winning the uh, tag belts. Chef's kiss for me, for sure. Uh, scissor me, daddy. Uh, and I just got the shirt this week, too, but I decided to wear Ricky because I was excited about that, too. But, um, yeah, I mean, just the match it all out was fucking incredible between the two. I mean, they could have won it there. Like, just the pop they, they've been gotten. And they've literally gotten to this point by themselves. Like, they have done it. They really haven't had much help. I know they've had uh, uh, Billy Gunn in their corner now, too. That was probably the only thing I didn't like about the match was Billy uh interjecting himself towards the finish of the match but you do want him to scissor you correct yeah uh, absolutely yes i will scissor okay. badass right. billy just make it sure just make it... um but yeah it was it was awesome just the pop the crowd they did it excited to see where they go i'm hoping this isn't uh one of those the chase is better than the reward type uh runs that we've seen so Mwah. anybody else Give us a bone to pick because I have a bone. All right, pick. here, let me do the fucking title card. Where is it? Ba da ba ba, bone to pick. That's my theme song. All right, uh, Joey, go ahead. Okay, as mentioned, NXT really bothered me this week with something. Last two weeks. That's a first. Carmelo, it, it's not. Um, Carmelo Hayes, who I have praised on this show, he's been in multiple chef's kisses. Carmelo Hayes, a week ago, lost the NXT North American title. Fine, you wanted to lose the belt. That's cool. They did it in a strange way with uh, Solo Sokoa, the new member of the Bloodline in storyline. He's a real-life family member, too. Um, saying that he he got an actual thing for a while. So he comes in as a surprise opponent, wins the match. A week later, Shawn Michaels, good Michael Hickenbottom, to go the shoot name route decides to vacate the title, vacate the title and put it up in a ladder match in a grand total of six weeks at Halloween Havoc. And my thought is the the other time Carmelo Hayes lost the belt, it was in a ladder match. They've kept this guy super strong in terms of not having him get pinned or lose cleanly. And yet this same night, this same night that they vacate the title, what do they have Carmelo Hayes do? They have him lose via a roll-up to somebody I like, but 
by no means should he be pinning Mello whatsoever in Andre Chase, a comedy low card character. This is one of the best booked guys in the past year. Star potential. His buddy Trick Williams has been looking great. I've even said in the group chat, hey, have Mello now either chase the world title or he and Trick win the tag titles because they had great chemistry. And this is how you follow up with this. Bad call NXT. I don't get why you wouldn't have Solo retained the belt. And to just treat this North American title like this, I just, I don't want to get scared. But if this is the downward spiral that the TNT belt saw, I'm worried for this mid-card title that they've done so well with up until this point. So NXT, do better with how you treat Carmelo Hayes, a legitimate star, in my opinion, in the making, and how you decide to handle title changes and traditional champions. Rich, go ahead. Good, sir. So my bone to pick is, is there a rankings in, in AEW now um, mm. as, as far as, you know, the, the sports, Let me check. I guess. Let me check. Is, is there a rankings? Because that's my bone to pick. Yeah, so they, they do still have the rankings. However, they are toning it down quite a bit. Rankings. Uh, um, they're, they're basically not showing the wins and losses anymore. They haven't and updated them since August yeah. 31st, by the way. Sorry. Okay, so uh, August 31st. Okay, um, and then... We, as of uh, then, CM Punk was number one contender, Hangman, Powerhouse Hobbs, <laughs> Jay Lethal, Darby <laughs> Allen. Like, okay, so now we have this golden ticket thing that, that Hangman page. Granted, that's your boy, Chad. Like, I'm not trying to, like, shit on him in any single way, but are we just omitting the rankings now? Um, well, Hangman's so been rank- in the top five for quite sure time sure no, but but no I hear, I'm just, I hear you i hear you yeah just just saying are we just omitting the rankings in entirety like because I, like, granted like we can blame the the elite and cm punk for for screwing up everything because they you know had a shoot fight but at the end of the day they haven't done anything since august right so are we doing the rankings like that's that's my my bone to pick like are we going to stick with the rankings or are we not going to stick with the rankings that is that is my only thing that i that i have um we're we're good with with, with juice mr joliet hopefully you you get to shine on wednesday night dynamite um you're gonna get destroyed by john moxley can but, we open uh, the show next week whenever we do this next with rich's opinion on mr joliet's performance in that match to keep this absolutely week's and what a lot. oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah okay all right yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. I, I i just wanted to make sure thank you yeah but that's that's my bone to pick for this week go ahead george all right so uh really quick before i go into my bone to pick uh rich yeah they aw is sort of playing down the ranking system now i think they're trying to get rid of it because at this point it's actually hurting them more than it's helping them um whereas they initially did uh legitimize a wrestler to get you know when they started competing for bigger matches it's now become the thing well we're just gonna hand we're just gonna pick whoever and throw them in the match rankings be damned so uh, yeah they're moving they, they are moving away from it um but that's not my bone to pick. No, my bone to pick is with, oddly enough, with WWE. Um, yeah, yeah. Considering I don't really watch WWE at okay, all. Joe. Don't. Hey, hey, I got gas. Another Joe, not Joey, by the way. No, I know. Yeah, the difference is I got gas and he don't. <laughs> and I that's and that's and I'm talking about the fuel for the car. But no, my bone to pick is with the potentially un- ma- the potential match that they've announced for Crown Jewel, Logan Paul versus Roman Reigns. I don't know if that's confirmed or not. It is confirmed. They had a whole it is- fucking pa- uh, press conference on it. They had a oh, press my- conference on Peacock with Logan trying to get fans smart by saying he is the table and get a botcha mania moment. Oh my god! Yeah, that's that's your that's your main event. Yeah. F- okay. I'm already gonna. I'm just gonna call this right now. Dumbest booking decision ever. Because no one. Wa- Here's the thing. Anybody who knows about Logan Paul pre wrestling has does not want anything to do with this guy. He he's a legitimate scumbag in all senses of the word. Wrestling fans who don't know who he is only know him because of the stuff that he's done in WWE. But he, oh my, it, it sickens me that he is getting put in this position. 
And this might be the only time you'll ever hear me say this. I hope Roman Reigns spears him in half because I just want this guy to go away. He is not he is not a professional wrestler. He does not have any right to be in this position when there are guys who train their entire careers to be in this position who aren't seeing the light of day and it just sucks so yeah that's my bone to pick chad go ahead uh we've had this conversation before and it might not have been on the pod but when a celebrity can come in and have a fucking pretty banger match with a, a, a wrestler who's been doing this for quite some time and they're doing it better than people that are in the back. That's a Dominic problem. Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio. That's a fucking problem. So I know he's a piece of shit outside of his YouTube shit and whatever, like in real, real life, he's a fucking asshole. I totally agree. But to say that he hasn't necessarily earned the spot when he signed the deal to do like three or four events, kind of pushing it. I mean, he did a pretty good job in that match, and no, know, he 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 did he did he did the job. And granted, this is at Crown Jewel. This is going to be like two o'clock in the afternoon. Blood money, what bro. Better... Blood money talks, baby. Yeah. So, what better way just to have Logan Paul and Roman Reigns at yeah. a two o'clock in the afternoon main event? Because no one's going to be watching this live. I like, people... I will not watch this match at all in protest. This is the same guy in Joey. And Joey, by the way, who refused to go to Backlash in Chicago when he found out Jinder Mahal was going to be in the main events. So I'm, I will not watch this match at all. I'm probably not going to go out of my way to watch it either. But as I've mentioned before, if people have a problem with the celebrity being in a match over somebody else in the back, that probably means those people in the back should be working harder to fucking get themselves over. It's just a fact at the end of the day. I hate to be that guy. There's plenty of talent in WWE who can have good matches, but they're obviously not doing enough if a guy like Logan Paul is coming in and, and taking their spotlight. It's just a fact. Well, well hopefully WWE or, or, or Triple H specifically brings back somebody to challenge Roman. Because if this if this is the sorry state that WWE is if in. Yes, smell what the rock. No, leave the rock out of this. Leave the Shut rock up, out of bitch. this. No, give me anybody, literally anybody to challenge Roman Reigns at this point. I don't care who you got to bring back, suck out of fucking wherever. Give it's me the White any- Rabbit. We already know. Just it's give the me White Rabbit. It's Cody. It's going to be the Rock at WrestleMania. Who the fuck knows? It, it just get give me a legit Luigi ra- Primo. What'd fuck you say? That? What'd Luigi you- Primo. <laughs> I, I heard he's getting shit on, actually, recently. <laughs> I heard he's yeah. an anti-vax guy, so he's getting canceled. Oh, oof, 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 big oof. Yeah, no, just get, again, give me any legitimate wrestler to get into this position. I don't care who it is. You want to put Roman or uh, Logan Paul on the card? Fine. Put him in a squash match against Braun and get it over with. Well, here, all- hold on. I'm going to add to this because not only can he work when he boxes too, but what's his YouTube following? Logan Paul. Let's see. I don't even want to know he that number. He has 23.6. Yeah, he's, he's over millions and millions of followers on YouTube. So if they can bring in more fans just because he's doing a little event, then they're going to do it. It's just all it is. Money, ratings, followers, fans. You know Listen, you want millions and millions of fans. Just have Mr. Beast come on for a guest spot. You don't need to put you know Logan Paul and whatever bullshit that hey, he's got. Anything's possible. You see fucking Dr. Disrespect doing advertisements for the NFL now and all sorts of shit. Like they're just doing whatever they can to get to get new following. It is what it is. And he can work out of it too. Yeah, he's uh, a piece of shit. Uh, like, Chad, you might wanna it. Chad, you might not wanna mention the good doctor on Twitch. Uh it's all right. No, it's not all right. That's the problem. Can we just talk about Luigi Primo some more? Luigi Primo, my guy, is a fucking anti-vaxxer. I'm a a Luigi Primo. I'm a Luigi Primo. I don't taste the shot. I make it a pizza. Uh, Bob, thoughts on Luigi Primo real quick before we sign off. Bro, I don't give a fuck about the dude. What? Oh, shit. Let's close up the show. All right, let's close this shit. I'm tired. I'm going to drink some beer and watch some movies. 
All right. I'll, let me, before we close up shop, I do want to do, talk about a quick hit here. Um, th- obviously, we mentioned um, that some wrestlers are unhappy with their station in AEW, um, but among them is the, the being most vocal I've heard is Brian Pillman Jr., um, who went on an interview stating that he felt that uh, you know Varsity Blondes got their you know basically their feet cut out from under them when Julia Hart got sent to House of Black, um, and basically they weren't given a chance to get over as a babyface tag team and blah blah blah. Let me tell you something, Pillman, my man, you aren't getting over for shit with Julia Hart. There wasn't a chance, you know, you're not getting over. You were never over. And you need to realize that and figure out what it is you need to do to get over. If you and my, you know, my final thought on that is, if you want to get over, go back to the Ric Flair retirement match, that whole card when you teamed with Brock Anderson and with Arn managing you to, because and start a new four horsemen, because that would be interesting. This varsity blondes crap is not interesting. Your guys are glorified jobbers at that point. So don't go on interviews complaining that Julia Hart was the key to your success because you didn't have any. You were still jobbing out. All right. Anyway, that's all we got for today. Unless anybody's got any last minutes that things to add. Anybody? Uh, no, you'll just see the Facebook chat and see how I'm trolling you further with Logan Paul stuff. Just uh, want to praise Lu- Luigi Primo some more. Luigi Primo, I'm making the best of pizza. I'm making a pizza. pizza but uh, he doesn't take the shot, though. Yeah, t- take the shot, Luigi, so we can like you again. Um, all right. Well, anyway, thank you guys uh, for joining us here on Twitch. Um, obviously, be sure to hit the follow button. Um, it does help the channel. gets us some, uh, some views. Um, obviously, tell your friends about us. Um, and, uh, if you are watching this VOD on YouTube, uh, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon to get notified when we upload new content. And, uh, especially, uh, like when we uploaded the vlog posts, I know a lot of people uh, were excited about those. So go check those out. Um, you know, we obviously, uh, then check us out on the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, that whole mess, um, um okay and chad's me- telling me to mention spotify and apple Podcasts and amazon um we are not mentioning luigi primo <laughs> um anyway so yes check us out on social media again check us out youtube twitch um we are here on every sunday uh recording live on twitch and uh we hope to see everybody here again uh next week um uh, for, but for everybody here on the podcast, uh, thank you again for listening, and I in, invite you all to do the move. Do the move! Do the move! Please come on the show, Luigi Primo. Scissor me, Daddy Chad! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Scissor me, boys. Can you smell what the Luigi Primo is cooking, baby? <laughs> Good night, One more time. What do you care about, <laughs> Luigi Primo? He ain't even keying up. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> All, All right. right. Since, I'm, since I'm at a party, I'm about Shut to up. go away. So I'll catch y'all later. Love you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Uh,